Corinthians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. One verse I want to read to you out of uh, chapter 4 of 1 Corinthians, verse number 2. You know this verse by heart, don't you? Moreover, brethren, it is required in stewards to do what? That a man be found faithful. A man be found faithful. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse number 20, a faithful man shall abound with blessing. And then over in the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, and verse number 3, but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. It is required in stewards, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. The work of our Lord goes forward on wings of faithfulness, or at least it should, amen. We are the uh, servants, the stewards of the Lord. And the Bible says again, moreover, I want to drill this in your head tonight, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Now, it's not required to be eloquent. It's not required to have many gifts, only that you be found faithful. That's what the Bible says. Only that you be found faithful. The work of our Savior is hindered by unfaithfulness. It's not the lack of money. It's not the lack of organization or the lack of buildings, but it's unfaithfulness. Unfaithfulness contributes nothing and builds nothing. Unfaithfulness is negative. Unfaithfulness steals, blinds, and destroys. Faithfulness builds, establishes, and always wins. Now, that's what's needed, I believe, in every local church. That's what's needed in Milton, Florida. That's what's needed everywhere. It's what's needed in Tennessee. It's what's needed where you're from, Indiana. What's, what's, what's what's needed everywhere in every local church is faithfulness. Amen? Now, not all men can be talented, but all can be faithful. I was watching um, or listening to Jared play that guitar. I have taken guitar lessons since I was a boy. I can't even chord one, much less play a song on it. Amen? But thankfully, my boys can. But uh, not all are talented, but we can be faithful. We can be faithful. Not all can be brilliant, but we can be faithful. Not all can be wealthy, but we can be faithful. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ would have never commanded something unless he had the provision to fulfill it. If he required stewards to be faithful, then he's going to give you everything necessary for you to be faithful. The Bible said we're to be good stewards of the manifold grace of God over in the book of 1 Peter chapter number 4 and verse number 10. It's important that you learn faithfulness early in life. Too, for too many people, life closes with sorrow and no meaning. You know why? Because that individual has been unfaithful to his God. People quit too soon. These people quit too soon. I know uh, I'm not going to mention any names for I don't I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or anything. But I know some folks up in Tennessee. I know some folks in Georgia. I know one in North Carolina that is suffering today because of unfaithfulness. God had called him in the ministry and uh, he had surrendered to the ministry. He quit the ministry. His wife left him. He's out of the ministry. I know another fellow that's uh, on up in age. And as a young man, he was called in the ministry. We're talking 60 years later, he still looks back on it. It's, I wish I'd have been faithful. I wish I'd have been... People just quit too soon. We need to be faithful. Now, there's three things I want to show you tonight uh, concerning faithfulness. First of all, I want to define faithfulness. Faithfulness is the act of being and doing what God desires of you. Did you know that God has a plan for every life and the fulfillment of that plan calls for steadfastness and faithfulness? Look over here while you're in 1 Corinthians. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The Bible says in verse number 5, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. But, verse 7, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And the Bible says in verse number 12, For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. God 
endows individuals with gifts, puts them in the body of Christ to function in their capacity. God wants us to be faithful. Faithfulness is the act of being and doing what God desires of you. God does have a plan for every life, and the fulfillment of that plan calls for steadfastness and faithfulness. Let's go over to Romans chapter number 12. We looked at 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 concerning the, the giving of gifts. In Romans chapter number 12, if you'll notice in verse number 3, Verse number 3 of Romans chapter 12, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts... Differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. What I'm trying to read in Romans chapter number 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 is God has a plan for our life. God gives every individual, every child of God a gift. He has given you the provision. He's given you the power to perform uh, that calling, and God has a place right here at the Faith Baptist Church for everyone I'm speaking to tonight. Every one of you has a place in the body of Christ. Now, you need to get in the Word of God, find your place, and begin to function in that place. Amen? And be faithful. Be faithful. Faithfulness is the act of being and doing what God desires of you. God has a plan for everyone, and He wants you to fulfill that plan. Now, when you submit to God, according to Romans chapter number 12 and verse number 1, the Bible said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. When you submit to God, you will accomplish the, pur the purpose that he has for your life. What is your purpose? I don't know. I've had people come up and say, Brother Rowan, what is my purpose? I said, you tell me. You get in the Word of God, and you know what God begins to do? God begins to put desires in your heart, and you begin to function in that area. Did you know when Brother Alton came here a few years back, he said, my desire is to this, 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 and this. I said, do you really mean it? He said, yes, sir, I really mean it. And now that was a year ago in November. That was a year ago in November. And you see what God has accomplished. Did you know that every one of you fellows has come through Second Chance Ministry, God has a place and a, and a program for you, and you just need to be faithful and fulfill it. You say, what is it? Well, get in the Word of God and find it. Amen? You will, God will let you know your gift, and you begin to function in that gift. How many gifts does God give? I do know this. He gives one for sure. Now, He may give several, but He gives one for sure. You find out what that gift is, and you begin to function in that gift. Faithfulness is a heavenly characteristic. The Bible tells us over here in the book of... Um, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 and verse number 24, Faithful is he that calleth you who will also do it. Who will also do it. God's faithful on his end. He needs you to be faithful. Amen. Also, the Bible says in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3 and verse number 3, The Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. God said he would establish you. God has never told you to do anything that he did not provide the necessary equipment, or of course, in, in this case, it's the Holy Spirit in you, the provision to fulfill that calling. It's required in stewards to do what? To be found faithful, amen? When we think of God, we think of faithfulness. Every time you think of God, you think of faithfulness. Aren't you glad that you don't have to remind God to keep his end of the bargain? I don't have to get up in the morning and remind God to function in my life. Amen. I just got to remind myself what God said he would do in my life. Amen. And submit my body, commit my body to him for his use all the day long. Every day. Not just one time, but every day. Every day. Lord, what would you have me to do? I have that in my office right there in front of me. Every time I sit down at the desk, I have a red little poster board card and it says, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And remember what Paul said in Acts chapter number 9, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? God gave him the instruction, gave him the power to fulfill the instruction, the blueprint for his life. And you know what he did? He fulfilled it. Henceforth there is laid it for me, a the time of my departure is near. 
And what he said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which a righteous judge shall give me in that day, not to me only, but to all them also that love is appearing. He was ready to go. I've fought a fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Don't you wish you could say that? Don't you wish you could say that? I have fought the fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. I have done exactly what I'm supposed to do. Amen. I hope you can say that. <laughs> now, God never fails. God never fails and God never, never, never lies. The Bible says over in the book of Titus, let me get over here. In Titus chapter number one and verse number two, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. God has not, cannot, will not lie. He cannot lie. He has told us to be faithful stewards and that we would, uh, he would, of course, empower us and give us everything necessary to perform that command that he's given us. Amen. And uh, also in uh, the book of Hebrews, let me read this in Hebrews chapter number 10 and verse number 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Amen. Jesus Christ, according to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 8, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Did you know the Bible speaks of our Heavenly Father as a rock and as a strong mountain? Did you know that His Word is more fixed than the sun and the moon? Around us we see many things change, but God never changes. He's ever the same. Now, faithfulness is the act of being and doing what God desires of His children. So hopefully we've defined faithfulness. Now let's describe faithfulness. The best picture of faithfulness is found in the life of Christ as He was upon this earth, as He walked upon this earth. The Bible says, and I use this a lot in John chapter number 4 and verse number 34, when the Lord Jesus said, My meat is to do the will of Him that sent me and to finish His work. That was his desire. That was his determination, his character. He was very faithful. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. And then in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7 and also verse number 9, uh, it is written in, and then it goes to say on in the volume of this book, I come to do thy will, O God. Jesus came to do the will of God. He was faithful. Amen. And he is the best example that you and I have of faithful. Faithfulness. Jesus was faithful when men desired his life. They hated him. They despised him. But he changed not. He was always faithful. Let's you and I be faithful. It's required in God's stewards to be found faithful. We need to be faithful. Amen. Jesus was faithful for 33 and a half years when he walked the face of this earth. He remained faithful to the word of God. Now, perhaps your life has been unfaithful and been unsteady because you've looked to others instead of looked to the Lord Jesus. Then I beseech you, look to Jesus. Look to Jesus, Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse number 2, the author and the finisher of our faith. Keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I can cite many examples in the Word of God what happens when you take your eyes off of Christ. You remember when Peter was walking on water? I take my hat off to Peter, walking on water. But what happened when he took his eyes off Christ and put them on circumstances? He started sinking. Keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Imitate Christ. Be faithful. It's required in God's stewards to be found faithful. Now, it's sad, but we will not see many illust illustrations and examples uh, of faithfulness of people around us. Now, there is some. There are some. I understand that. But especially today, young people are picking out weak examples for emulation. I, I, I could go and name a list and, you know, and uh, I'll never forget back, uh, uh, you know, culture changes or times changes preachers preaching. I remember the days when I started preaching that uh, uh, all of the kids had heroes and ninja turtles. You remember them? I don't know what it is. Now, I'm too old to keep up with that stuff. Amen. But I just never could understand the parents letting, um, letting their children put, uh, use uh, ninja turtles as their heroes, you know. I got a problem with men wearing pantyhose. <laughs> I did. I've always, <laughs> I've always had a problem with that. Now, uh, but now what are these new, what are these new uh, characters they're following today? 
I don't know what they're following today, but I do know who you should follow, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Most people's focus and goals is not on God and holiness. It's on Hollywood instead of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Fact is, fact is, that's why some will never, never trust Christ as their Savior is because they're picking the wrong heroes. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalm, chapter number 50 and verse number 23, if we order our conversation right, the Bible promises, God promises, He will show to us His salvation. And when you begin to seek Christ, and I'm talking about the... Did you know, did you know as a nine-year-old boy, and I mean this, and I'm not uh, bringing the light on me, but somebody told me the other day, said they hated preachers, and I said... Uh, I've always loved preachers. I have. Even as a boy, I thought they were the next, next to God. I didn't care what denomination it was. I just thought they were right up there, you know, that, that, that God, they were in the hand of God. I always thought that. I always loved preachers. But um, uh, I understand now that after I'm a pastor and listen to some pastors, that uh, it doesn't mean I don't love preachers, but I sure don't love some of the messages they put out. Amen, because uh, they're sure misleading some people. But there are men and women you can find example who are faithful. You got some right here at the Faith Baptist Church in Milton, Florida. You got some examples of faithfulness. You've got some examples of faithfulness. You got a little lady right over here that drives 30 something miles every time the doors open. Amen. You got, she, you know, very seldom, very, I can count on one hand since I've known her how many times she's missed church. You've got, you've got some men, or you got Brother Kelly sitting right there, Miss Kelly. You got Brother Kelly that's been faithful all through the years. I mean, he's seen us come and go. He's, he's seen some preachers come and go, but he stayed faithful. You can look around. You've got some faithful people right here that you could look up to and emulate. And thank God for those faithful people. Amen? Uh, we can find examples. We can find examples, too, in the Word of God. We got Abraham in the Bible. He wasn't perfect, but he's faithful. He was faithful. In Romans chapter number 4, it talks about him said he was very faithful. He was fully persuaded that what God promised he was able also to perform. And then we had David. Now, he certainly was not perfect, but he was faithful. He was faithful. Especially David, above all, was faithful in his love toward God. He loved what God loved and hated what God hated. That's why God said he was a man after his own heart. Amen. You'll find him also in Romans chapter 4 as well. Look at Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. The Bible says in verse number 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, we're encompassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Who are these witnesses? Well, you know, they're in chapter 11. In chapter 11. Go back to Hebrews chapter 11. Look at verse number 4. We got Abel. Abel by faith. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. You can find out about Abel in Genesis chapter 4 in the first eight verses. He was faithful. You got in verse number 5 of Hebrews chapter 11, you got Enoch. If you want to find out uh, anything about Enoch... You can go back to Genesis chapter number 5 and read verse 21, 22, and 23, and it'll talk about it. But look at verse number 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That he, oh, mercy. He pleased God. Now, you'd have to be here this morning to appreciate that. Amen. He pleased God. Uh, let, me, let me just read something else while I'm on that subject. I don't know if I read it to you this morning or not, but you'll see it over there in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4 and verse 1. Listen to this. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to do what? And to please God. How you ought to please God. So next time somebody says, no way has ever pleased God but Jesus... You know, I mean, honest to goodness, lighten up. Like, you, know, you know, I think it's that attitude that runs people off. I really do. And I, I really do. And if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we with the truth, we can, you know, we can offend more with the truth and we can help sometimes if you're not careful. You know what the Bible says? That I can please God. If I got up here and says, I can please God. If I got up here and said, you can please God, you ought to agree with that. 
You ought to agree with that. Now, let's sit down and talk about it. The only, yeah, I understand. It's by the Holy Spirit. Did you know that I just got through preaching that everything God's commanded you to do and He's commanded you to please Him? Did you know He's given you the provision to do it? What's the provision? Grace, grace the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in you. Grace. Amen. He has given you everything to, to, to ask Him to bless the work of your hands, to be pleasing to Him with our walk. And so Ab Enoch pleased God according to the Bible. I can see it in my mind. They were walking along, you know, and uh, Enoch says, come on, I'll fix you supper. And God said, no, won't you just come to my house? Let me fix you supper. Amen. And he was gone. What a way to go. Man, alive. Be we're going to get translated one day. Did you know that? If the Lord was to come back today, we still leaving and breathing, we'd be translated. Translated. That means we won't taste physical death. We'd be translated. Now, now I, I tell you what, I've already got it in my mind, my luck, you know, and I don't believe in luck, but I say my luck. I'd, I'd die a day before the rapture. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I don't want to get like Joe Sollers up here. Amen. All right, but I would... Uh, I, I would, but I know one thing. If he comes back today and I'm still leaving and breathing, living and breathing, I'm going to be translated. I know that for sure. All right, just strike that from YouTube, all right, that last statement. All right, we got Abel, we got Enoch, we got Noah. We got Noah. Look at verse 7 of Hebrews 11. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not, yet, or not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. So we got Abraham, uh, Abraham, Abel, Enoch, and we got Noah that was faithful to God. Abraham and Sarah, verse number 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 of Hebrews chapter number 11, were faithful. In verse 20 and 21, we got Isaac and Jacob. In verse 22, we got Joseph. Now, we, if you want to read about Joseph, you can go all the way back and read Genesis 37 through 58, and you'll find out that Joseph was a, was, was a godly, faithful, faithful, faithful man, tempted but overcame and was faithful, faithful. Moses, in verse number 23 uh, of Hebrews chapter number 11, uh, all the way down through verse number 29, Moses was faithful. Moses' parents, Amram and Jochebed, were faithful. Joshua Verse number 30, was faithful. Rahab, verse 31, was faithful. And there's many more there if you read in verse number 32 through 40. And we'll find the faithful ones. And it doesn't matter whether you're young, middle-aged, or old, we're to be faithful. We had Daniel and Samuel that remained faithful all the way to the end in their old age. We had uh, Paul, Peter, and John started faithful and ended faithful. We can be faithful. Don't care how old you are, we can be faithful. And that's what God says. Moreover, it's required in stewards what? That's what it says. To be found faithful. Be faithful in the small hidden places of life too. Be faithful on your job. Be faithful even when others seem to have forgotten about you. You know, I, I might not name you as your pastor in the work you do here, I, I, but I appreciate you. I appreciate the faithfulness. And did you know that your faithfulness is going to shout volumes? You don't, you don't need me to commend you every day. You don't need that, but your faithfulness is going to shout volumes. You can, uh, if, 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 if we were to uh, take a poll right now tonight on the faithful ones of the Faith Baptist Church, I guarantee you those that stuck with the stuff over the years and been faithful, they're the first names they would call out. Your name speaks volume if you're faithful. Now, if you're not faithful, I guarantee your name speaks volumes as well. Yeah, mention is, I'd hate to have a reputation like that. Mention your name, ah, oh, he's, don't know if he's going to be here or not. Well, we're having a work day. Well, I don't know if he's going to be here or not. I don't know if she's going to be here or not. We're having this. I don't know if they're going to get involved or not. You know, I, that's a terrible, terrible testimony. We need to be faithful. Now, we got faithfulness, the definition of faithfulness. We've described faithfulness. Now, faithfulness is the to be, number three, desire, desire, desire it. Let it be your constant goal. First of all, we need to pray for an understanding of faithfulness. And that means reading your Bible and judging your own selves in the light of the Word of God. I, I desire to be faithful. How can I be faithful? Read the Word of God and judge myself in light. And I can get this out of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Judge myself in light of the Word of God. Second, second, 
is plan my life, plan your life for faithfulness. So how do you do that? Well, you set goals, make resolutions. And it sounds almost like a New Year's message tonight, but you know why people aren't making resolutions and setting goals? For fear of not making it. For fear of not making it. So let's, let's set some goals in our life to be faithful. Set goals. Make resolutions. And that means simply what we said earlier is, is uh, presenting our bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, uh, which is our reasonable service. And what do we do? Our time. Our, set some goals with our time. Set some goals with our talents. Set some goals with our monies, our treasure. Did you know that every mission conference we take up an envelope saying how much do you trust God for uh, to give to missionaries during the year? Set some goals. Pray about it. Be faithful. Be faithful with your giving. Be faithful. Don't say you'll give one day and then uh, turn right around and, and uh, half the year you don't give to mission. We ought to give. Be faithful. Be faithful in giving. You don't want to hear a message on giving tonight. Well, it's right here and I had to say something about it. Why? Because it's part of my life. It's part of the Christian life. To give. Amen? Amen. And be faithful in your church attendance. Not just when you feel like it or not, but be faithful. Just be faithful. You know, I could have, uh, many, many Sunday mornings I could have, uh, or, or I say I could have slept in, but as you get older you don't sleep in. That's terrible, isn't it? Some, some, of, you, some of you people that's older than I am, don't you desire to be, to have that uh, sleep them teenagers get, used to get? You remember how you sleep with a teenager? You had to go in there. I mean, a bomb couldn't wake you up. But now I got to admit, some Sunday mornings I get up and I think, well, now I, if I could just stay in the bed a little bit longer, or if I could just sit down and rest just a little bit longer. Well, you need to be faithful. Be faithful in your church attendance. Be faithful. In the, uh, and while we have revival meetings and mission conferences, is for you. It's, it's not just for the pastor. It's for you. It's for me as well, but it's for you too. Be faithful. Uh, may, I may have given you this illustration, but there was a little boy hired out to a man who owned a large hardware store. And he sent him to the attic. And the attic, of course, gloomy and dusty. And there was a pile of nails and screws and nuts and bolts. And they were all just piled together. All just piled together. And the owner of the store said, your, your first chore is to separate all these nuts and bolts and nails and screws and put them in, in the right bins. Well, the boy thought about taking a nap, but instead he determined that he was going to finish the job. And three days later he finished and the work was inspected by the owner. And the owner said, that was just a test, my boy, that I give to see whether a boy is going to be worthy of a better position. Gave him a raise and gave him a better position. Amen. Three days later. Did you know that sometimes you think you're being overlooked, but you just put the, you just put the right uh, bolts in the box there and the right nails and the right screws. Amen. Just do what God, just do what God says. Just do, and you know what he's going to do? He's even going to reward your faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Isn't that a great incentive? And he don't even have to. But the, the greatest, the, the incentive, he's going to reward our faithfulness. And perhaps God is giving you some kind of test right now in your life. And uh, so if you go in an area... Uh, back and out, you might as well forget it. Go in an area and say, Lord, what do you have for me? What can I learn from this test? What can I learn from this? And as we go through these tests and trials together, teach me what I need to know. And uh, some of you, some of you is probably going through a test right now, but you need to be determined. And the question you need to ask yourself, am I faithful? Determine in your heart to be faithful. Will you pray with earnestness and sincerity? Oh, Heavenly Father, please make me a faithful Christian. I want to be faithful. Why? Because it's required in God's stewards to be found faithful. Uh, take from me, dear Lord, this unfaithfulness and make me a steady, trustworthy child of God. Amen. And again, the greatest reward is the Lord Jesus looking at you according to Matthew chapter 25 in verse number 21. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Let me just give you uh, one more. Did you know that God said in uh, Numbers chapter 12, in verse 7, that, that Moses was faithful? And so, do you think it was a coincidence that God uh, uh, called Moses on the backside of the desert there at Horeb and spoke to him out of the burning bush? No, Moses had some qualities of faithfulness. And I'm going to show you something here in Nehemiah chapter 7. Nehemiah 
Nehemiah chapter number 7. In uh, verse... Nehemiah chapter 7. Uh, you know, I said that's where I want to go. Okay, verse 2. That's where I want to go. It is... Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 2. That I gave my brother Hanani and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem. For he was a, what was he? You know why he got the position over Jerusalem? He was faithful and he feared God. Let me give you another one. Nehemiah 13. Nehemiah 13, verse 13. And I made treasures over the treasuries, Shelemiah the priest, and Zadok the scribe, and of the Levites, or whatever his name is. Next to him was Hanan the son of Zakur, the son of Mataniah, for they were counted what? Faithful. Faithful. And their office was to distribute unto their brethren. Did you know, you know what the pastor's going to do when he needs a position filled at the church, you know what he's going to do? He's going he's to get somebody. He's not going to go to the most unfaithful fellow. He's not going to the, the ones that's always up and down. He's going he's to go to the one. And, and it's the same way in a job, not just a pastor, not just a church, but in your job. He's, they're going to go to the one that's faithful. And they're going to promote that individual. They're going to give that individual the better job. Um, even even as a lost man, when I was running a store for several years, um, I watched people, and I never promoted the slackers. Never, never. Prom I mean, why in the world would I want them in the in the in the workforce there and 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 bringing everybody else down? Did you know in the church, in the church, people watch you, and again, your faithfulness speaks volumes. And so when it comes time for a position to be filled in the church, you know what? They're going to come to you. They're going to come to you and ask you to fill it. So be faithful. Be faithful. Did you know it's required in God's stewards to do what? Be found faithful. Folks, be found faithful. Be found faithful in proclaiming the Lord Jesus Christ everywhere you go. And not only proclaiming Christ, but living Christ. Be faithful with your life. Be faithful. Just be faithful. And watch what God can do right here in our midst at the Faith Baptist Church. Amen? All right, let's stand to our feet and we'll be dismissed. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Appreciate your faithfulness and your attendance. Be faithful in your Christian walk and your Christian life. As we're dismissed in prayer, Brother Dewey Mars, if you'll dismiss us, please.